international affairs editor Philip Turl is joining us here on set. Philip, just first of all, explain to us what on earth this uh, BRICS summit is and just why it's so important. Well, to put you out of your misery, Stuart, I'll tell you what BRICS actually stands for. Uh, it is Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. South Africa being not amongst the original members, but added on from 2010. Uh, BRICS was first created in 2009. And I think back at the time, many people sort of chuckled about it, thinking it was not going to be a serious uh, adventure. But in fact, since then, uh, it's become synonymous with the global south. And even more than that, beyond being what it was originally created for, which was to be a, an economical group to build foreign investment opportunities, it's now become much more political uh, in its growth. And I think many on the West are not laughing now because they see the BRICS as a serious contender to even be more influential than the G7, the group of seven richest nations, the United Nations and uh, the United States. And I think that is the whole crux of this matter. And certainly as far as Vladimir Putin is concerned, this is something that he's trying to show by holding this summit in Kazan uh, in eastern Russia or central Russia, east of Moscow. Uh, an area which uh, he wants to show to the world that he's able to bring together some of the major powers like uh, China, like India, for example, even representations from Brazil. Uh, and even the Turkish uh, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is going to be there, even though he's a member of NATO and his country is also knocking on the door of the European Union still. So this is a way of the Russians saying, look, we, are, we might have invaded Ukraine, we might be under foreign sanctions, but we are still a force to be reckoned with. And we're sitting at the table with all these international countries, these international powers. So you better sit up and listen to what we're going to do. And on top of that, uh, there, are other, there are other important additions to add, which is, that 30 countries or so are now knocking on the door of the BRICS. And there's a discussion going on about even creating what the, the Russians and the Chinese have described as a BRICS type of government and a BRICS plus group of countries that are not, are not official members of BRICS, but uh, are uh, guests who are invited to successive BRICS summits. Uh, these include both Iran and uh, Turkey that I was just mentioning. Yeah, so all this sounds like um, quite a big success then for Russia. It's been a big success. Uh, and there are three aims, I think, as far as the Russians are concerned. The first one is to show the West, as I was saying, there is a world majority, not just a global South, uh, ready to sit at the table with Russia and also with China. But I think basically it's mostly that people would like to be at the table with China more than Russia right now. Uh, it's to show that Russia is a major power and it's doing business with the biggest economies in the world. And uh, it's an invitation to move away from Europe, move away from the US dollar, move away from the G7, move away from uh, Western influence uh, and to offer a different uh, way forward for the world, a different world order, which is not dominated by the United States and by the US dollar. What are the major challenges then that uh, the BRICS countries face? Well, uh, there are several major challenges. I think one of the, the big challenges as far as the BRICS group is concerned is that they are trying to create an alternative currency. I've mentioned the dollar a couple of times. That's the, the world's international currency. But of course, with the sanctions on Russia, with the sanctions on Russian banks, Russian banks are no longer able to use the SWIFT system, which is created by the Swiss, which enables much easier banking around the world between different nations. Uh, and that means that if you want to, for example, buy and sell goods from Russia between Russia and China, you can do that in dollars. But now you can't because the currency trading mechanism, the SWIFT, has been banned in Russia. So what the BRICS group is going to attempt to do at this summit is to come up with an alternative to that to try to work out how uh, they can do trading uh, in foreign currencies which are not the dollar, but which are going to be seen as being international currencies. The problem for the Russians is that they have many yuan, they have many rupees, but they can't use these on the international currency markets because they just are not international currencies. And that's handicapping them in their business exchanges with the Chinese. As far as other countries are concerned, for example, India. India wants to remain with close ties to Russia because of the fact that India is uh, a major recipient of Russian gas and oil. It's the same for Turkey. Turkey can't really afford to fall out with Russia. That's why it's present at this BRICS meeting, because it depends a lot on Russian gas, uh, which is used by the people of Turkey. So all of these different 
uh, steps are being taken in a way to boost the standing of the BRICS, to make it look like it's a viable alternative to the new world order. That's something Dmitry Peskov, the uh, spokesman of the Kremlin, has been saying in the, the last uh, couple of days that uh, this is a major success for the Russians. This is probably the biggest diplomatic gathering in the history of modern Russia that's taking place right now. It's all positive news for Vladimir Putin. I think a few long faces probably in uh, the West in uh, the United States, seeing what is going on. And even Antonio Guterres, who has not been officially confirmed he's going to be there, uh, is expected to meet with Vladimir Putin on Thursday. That is also another uh, proof that this is uh, a force to be reckoned with in the future. Philip, thanks so much. Philip Tell, uh, International Affairs Editor here on France 24.